Greetings Earthlings. Today I want to go over a very interesting problem. I saw this problem recently, some students brought it to me, and I realized it was quite tricky. And so I think this would fall very nicely into our habits of organization. So let, let's look at this problem. So the question is how many four-sided shapes are in this diagram? So there are good ways of doing this and bad ways of doing this. So the bad way of doing this, by the way, it would be a good idea to pause the video and try to do it by yourself. Assuming you've done that, let's dive in. So what's a bad way of doing this is just to randomly count like, oh, I found one, here's, uh, here's one, here's two, and basically try to do it just visually and keeping track of everything in your head. If you do it that way, you are almost guaranteed to lose count. So that's kind of the bad way of doing things, to try to do it in your head. So let's go into how to do this properly, or what I recommend. So there's one key word for this entire video, and I highlighted it in the middle of the page, and that word is organization. That is the principle. If your approach is organized, you will get this right. So that said, there are many ways of doing this. So I'm gonna show you guys at least three different ways, one of which has kind of two variations. So we're gonna see really four ways of doing this, but keep in mind, you might find other solutions. So let's go, let's go into this. So number one is what I'm gonna call the regions approach. You could also call it the sizes, but I think regions is more accurate. So what does that mean? So first of all, you'll notice on the diagram, I actually labeled all the regions. So I kind of try to go left to right. So top down and left to right. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Why is that useful for us? Because then we can refer to the numbers instead of trying to remember, oh, it's that thing over there. So all we're going to do for the regions is organize them by the amount of regions. So we're going to look at this box on the right. So ignore the thing on the left. We're going to get to that in a second. So for the regions approach, we're going to say how many regions have, how many, sorry, how many rectangles have exactly one region. So that would be number one. That would be number three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Basically everything except for two because two is not a rectangle. So, and I've just listed them all over here. And so that should be nine. The beauty of this is that we are less likely to lose track of something. So now we're going to go to quadrilaterals or, or rectangles or four-sided shapes that have two regions inside of them. So what's the, um, and also keep in mind when I'm doing this, I'm trying to go in order of the numbers as much as I can. So that is also going to encourage me not to lose track of things. So for example, size two or two regions would be one and four. So that, that whole thing is a rectangle. Then we can have two and five. So you can just follow along in the diagram. So two and five, three and six, five and six, five and seven, six and eight, seven and eight, eight and nine, and finally four and 10. So those are all of the size two or two region figure shapes that we can find in the diagram. Now, uh, or four, I should say four sided shapes. All right, now we're going to four sided shapes with three regions. So that's gonna be one, four, and 10. That's gonna be three, six, and eight, six, eight, and nine. And that's pretty much it. So we just take these like skinny rectangles. It's this one, these three, and that th those three. Now we go to size four. So we have two, three, five, and six, five, six, seven, and eight, and three, six, eight, and nine. Now, again, keep in mind, notice it's kind of a lot of like writing, but I'm keeping track of everything. So because I am organized, I'm, not, I'm very unlikely to miss things. Now let's go to size five or region five, five regions. So five regions is actually only one, and that's this gigantic rectangle here made out of three, six, eight, nine, and four. So if we take all these numbers and add them up, nine plus nine plus three plus three plus one, we should get 25. So there are 25 four-sided shapes in this diagram. Now let's go to the second solution. So the second solution is a very powerful technique, not just for this problem, but for a lot of other problems. And this is what I call the iterative or iterative um, solution. Now, I wanna note that there are, 
I realize there are two ways of doing this in this problem. There's a forwards way and a backwards way. So what I'm showing you guys here on the paper is the forwards method. And then I'll tell you about the backwards method. So the forwards method is, first of all, let's realize what's complicated about this. There's a lot of stuff going on. So the iterative solution says, let's start really small and we're going to iterate. So basically we're going to add on little by little and keep track of everything at each step. So also, you might be kind of annoyed at all these diagrams. So if you're actually doing this, you don't need to draw all of these diagrams. You just have to basically do this process and keep track of this as you're doing it. I'm just showing you this, these diagrams so you can follow along more easily. So you would only have to really draw one diagram for the iterative approach. So here's how it would start. So you would draw a rectangle and now I just put a dot here to indicate that's our first thing. And also the sh all the shaded stuff you'll see that means that's the, the latest thing we've just added. So if we drew a rectangle, that means we just, how many new things have we added to the diagram? Well, we just added a rectangle, so that's one. Now I'm adding this square. So why am I doing this? You don't have to do it in this order. You can literally do it in any order you want. Basically, I'm trying to recreate this figure, adding in one region at a time. So if I add in this square, so in terms of our regions there, that would be number three. So if I add in number three over here, I've added one new rectangle. So now I'm gonna add region number six. So if, if I add region number six, I've added actually three new things, which is the, the region six itself, six and three, but also two, three, um, two, three, five, and six. So the, basically this in the big rectangle. So convince yourself that when you add this shaded square, you add three new rectangles to the diagram. Now I'm going to add region five. So when I add region five, I've added region five, of course, but also five and six. So that's two new rectangles. Now you might be thinking, well, I'm taking advantage of these numberings. That's just to explain it to you guys. So if I were actually doing this, I would just focus on what I'm adding and get the number correct. You don't have to actually label this and draw the diagram. So there's two new ones there. Now, if I add this bit here, I'm going to add this by itself, but then, so this will be region eight in the original. So I'm going to add eight. I'm going to add eight and six and eight, six and three. Those are the three new rectangles for this one. And I'm not going to read it off for every single one. Basically, this would be region seven, and this creates four new rectangles. Now, when I say four new rectangles, keep in mind when we're doing this, we're not counting all the old ones. So this is only stuff that now includes this new piece. And same thing, I'm just gonna go bit by bit and notice, basically, I want you guys to focus on the progression here is we start small and we iterate, we keep adding one region at a time till we get larger and larger, and that's our original diagram. So finally, with this last piece I've added, I've added three, and then we're gonna take what we've added at each step. So it's one plus one plus three plus two plus three plus four plus four plus two plus two plus three, and that should add up to the same 25 that we got from method one. Now, so that was the iterative approach. I actually really like the iterative approach. Um, I'm not sure that it's much better for this problem than the first solution, but I'll comment on that in a little bit. Now. What is the backwards version? Instead of actually starting from a small diagram and adding things to copy the original and keeping track of things as we've done here, you can go backwards. So you can draw the full diagram and then basically cross off regions as you've counted them. So like, let me show you how that would work. So let's say you, you have this as your original diagram and it's unlabeled. So then you think, where is region one? How many rectangles is this part of? Well, this is part of one, one and four, and then one, four, and 10. So you would cross off the one entirely. So delete that from your diagram so you could shade it. And then you would mark that that just gave you three. So then you could go to, let's say the 10. So the 10 is part of how many remaining ones? Well, it's one and then two, so four and 10. So when you cross this off, you would add in another two to your list. Okay, so then we can basically keep going. So four, four is part of four and it's part of three, six, eight, nine, and four. So that would give you two. So now we've crossed this up. So notice, instead of basically increasing the diagram as we're doing here, 
you would decrease the diagram as you cross, cross off areas you've already considered. I like both of them. I think they're both really cool methods. So that's all I'm going to say there. Let's go to the sweep method. So the sweep method says, let's just, con and by the way, there, there are many variations of these. I'm just showing you the kind of general idea. You could, it doesn't have to be the left. You could be the top, the bottom, whatever. I'm going to consider the left border. So let's say the left border is either at one, at two, at three, or at four. Now one, two, three, and four are vertical lines. So imagine that they're not like just these segments, they're entire lines. So in the original, let's say you have region three, that left border would be part of this line number three over here. So it doesn't have to be the entire border. It, it can be anything that touches this shaded line. All right, so I'm gonna consider the rectangles that have only that at, its left border has to be on the shaded part. So there's only four cases. There's case one, two, three, and four. So case one is that it's touching this, case two is it's touching line two, and case three is touching in line three, and case four is touching line four. So for case one, we only have two rectangles. In terms of the original shape, that would be region two and five, or two, three, five, and six. Those both touch this left border over here. Now, for number two, how do we get six? Well, it would be this one right here, this little square. So that's one. It would be these two, three, four. Then it would be these two, five, and all four. That's six. So then we would go to line three. So we were, we're already done with this part. So now we're going and seeing what touches line three on the left. So it's this little guy, so one, two, well actually, what I would, let's count them by ones. So they're singletons. We have one, two, three, four. Then we have size two, so it's five, six, seven, size three, eight, nine, size four, 10. Then we have the big one, 11. So that's where I got that 11. Then we go to line four. We have one, two, three, four, five, and six. So hopefully you were able to follow along how I got these numbers. And actually, I didn't realize this at the time, but it seemed like this might actually be the fastest approach for the original problem. Or at least, the, sorry, the fastest approach that I'm aware of, I should say, because you know, there are always new things that you can learn. So I think these are all three powerful approaches. The main thing, so I want you guys to be aware of, is not to pick a favorite approach, but focus on organization. That is what's guiding all of these things. We just pick a way where we can keep track of everything. So I want to leave you guys with this. For this problem, you know, your first thought is do whatever works to get the right answer. So we have the regions approach, the iterative forwards and backwards approach, and the sweep approach. By the way, there could be other solutions. So I encourage you guys to think if you can find another way of organizing your work. Maybe a more clever way. Maybe it could be faster than what we've done here. Who knows? Now, the real test of your approach, in my opinion, like step one is get, you know, get the problem right, figure out how to do it. Step two is to ask yourself this question. Does your solution scale? In other words, if I gave you a really, really crazy diagram like this, so that has the original plus a ton of extra stuff. So I'll just bring it up to the camera so you guys can see. It's like, it's really crazy. So does your solution, so let's say we tried the region one approach. Would region one work well for that diagram? I think it might still work, but it's gonna start to deteriorate. How about region two? I think region two, uh, sorry, the iterative uh, solution two would work fairly well, uh, both the forwards and the backwards approach. So I think this, for harder problems, this, this is a very good approach. And the sweep approach might work as well. So it might depend on the problem, which of these two is better. So I think for the original, they're all pretty good solutions. Maybe even the regions one, like I'd say they're equally good, uh, oh, close. They're close to being equally good. But as the problems get crazier, I want you to think about, now what I've said now might not be accurate as to which one becomes better, but think, 
would you still prefer your solution, whichever one you like the best, as the problem gets crazier? That's really the test of how robust, how heavy duty is your solution. So for example, you can build a car that drives a mile, but can your car drive 10,000 miles? Can your car drive 100,000 miles? So that's something to think about. And you know, if you're thinking about these questions, that's the kind of thing that engineers, you know, professional mathematicians, that's the kind of thing that professional scientists think about is, yes, I found the solution, but what can I do with it? How can I extend it? Is this gonna last? Is this really um, a heavy duty solution? Or does this just solve my problem? In other words, this is my problem, but what if I wanna solve more problems? So I feel like two and three, I think these are just my opinions now, two and three might be um, kind of more powerful for crazier problems, but as long as you pick a good organizational scheme, you're on your way. So I'll leave you guys with that. Hopefully you found that interesting, and if nothing else, you definitely have many ways of solving this problem. All right, I'll see you guys in the next videos.